We're about to start our first day of off-road riding. We're at the campsite. We're about to have breakfast now. The entire camp's waking up. I'm the earlier riders. They left at 8 in the morning. So we're getting ready for the Aserta today. So we're going to start off easy and then kind of get our feet wet in the off-road sections here. Okay, guys. <laughs> Leaving the campgrounds after our first off-road adventure. I'm not really sure why it's taking so long here. Well guys, we're on our way to the Aceta. And we're now just going through this tiny little village here, which is nice and cute. Yeah guys, I was just a little lost here because there's a marketplace and I couldn't find a way. And I saw these two guys from Italy on these bikes. So we're just following them to find the entry point to the Aceta. Looks like these guys know where they're going and it looks like we're back on track too. So if you don't know where to go, you just follow the locals. <laughs> These guys are crazy. Super loud. Okay. Yes! We approach the Strada de Alcieta from the north end. This is probably one of the lesser known entrances to the official track. The official track starts in a uh, southwest corner and so we're sort of shortcutting about uh, a few kilometers really. But as you can see, it was quite nice um, to ride up that section and we're not the only ones that took uh, that particular road. the other riders here that were passing at the moment. So that was quite a nice start before we actually get to the uh, Strada del Sieta itself. We picked the Strada del Sieta as a first track for a reason, because it's a relatively easy off-road track. We had planned to ride six days in the West Alps, so that was a, a very good place to start. And as you can see, this is the middle of September and it's been very dry in that area. It's very, very dusty to get up to the, uh, you know, to the entry point of the uh, Strada del Sieta. Geil, Hammer, ey. Okay. Ja, ist das von der Geschwindigkeit okay? Das ist sportlich. Also ein bisschen weniger? Ja, aber nicht schneller. So, guys, we're at the entry point of the Asieta. 
just enjoying the views for now. We had a little bit of off-road tracks just coming up here, but the actual road is starting right here. ahead of you that is so cool you spend quite a bit of time up there at the very top I think this is the highest elevation I forgot the name of the call uh, to look it up but it's I guess it's a little bit downhill now and then alongside the mountain again Strada de Alcieta is quite a popular road with other vehicles as well, so you'll have anything from mountain bikes to 4x4 cars that you'll meet on the track. I don't think it was very full for the middle of September, but you'll meet the occasional vehicle and I have to say, especially the cars uh, were great in making room for you. They would usually uh, pull over to the side and let you pass as this vehicle is doing here. So throughout the entire time, that was a good experience. It only takes a second from things to turn from very good to really bad. Uh, <laughs> 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 <lacht> ich glaube, Felix hat seinen klaren Plan. Ei, ei, ei. Ja, das, das ist ja klar. Das Ding musst du ganz abmachen, ganz reinigen. Ja. <lacht> das ist ein Chaot, Alter. Ey. Yes. Yes. yes! Hast du schön die Rallye-Dings hier drauf vorne? Da gibt es hier richtig Zunder. Was passiert? Um, Okay guys, so uh, Jochen unfortunately crashed his bike, uh, he was almost at a standstill, but tipped it over to one of the uh, cylinders and the uh, cylinder cap has a small hole in it now, so he can't ride anymore, uh, there's dirt in the engine, so I'm going to try to roll down the bike, should be downhill from here, and then we'll take it from there. The plan was to roll down Jochen's bike close enough to the street that we could reach it with the camper van and the trailer that Jochen had and then bring it back to camp to fix the bike. Unfortunately, we took a wrong turn and had to turn around at this point. Das auch die, die Google anzeigt. Kriegst du das hin mit dem Schieben? But it wasn't a very long way to get to the parking lot and then I took Jochen on the back of my bike and we went back uh, to the campsite so he could pick up his camper van and the trailer.
turn into some kind of a gravel road hopefully it was a single single track Everything worked out quite well because this is actually the better way to approach the Col de Finestre is coming from the north side and then take the track down south. So guys, we're at the top of the Col de Finestre, uh, which is a really nice ride up. Um, half of it was paved, the rest was gravel road. Um, it's really beautiful up here. At its highest point, the Col de Finestre meets the Strade de Asiata, so that was very close to where we parked Jochen's bike. So we took Jochen's bike down the hill and met him down at the street where we could load up his bike and then the five of us would go back to camp and try to fix the bike. Okay. So there's the band of the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is it, genau. It's a magic item. The magic item. I was absolutely blown away by the fact that we met someone at the camp that had a spare part, a cylinder head for a 25 year old BMW. So that made the repair quite a bit easier. We just had to swap out the parts and we were ready to go for the next day. Ah, ja, ja, ja. 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 Ja
schlimm, so das kleine Instrumente, dann direkt aus den Ritzen kratzen, ist doch geil. <lacht> Das ist ein hier exzellent, ey. Ja, aber das muss jetzt nur runterkriegen. Wie? Du hast doch schon mal drauf gemacht. What's up guys, we're getting ready for day number two. We have uh, Jochen's bike fixed, at least the cylinder head that was fixed, but he had issues now with this throttle. It's an old bike, so we did just monkey around with it a little bit. It's probably gonna go, he's gonna go with us now, and we're gonna hit the uh, Col de Cotelivier, I think that was called, and then Sommelier uh, in the afternoon, which should be really nice. Should just bring us up to about 3,000 meters. So I'm really looking forward to today. Stay tuned. Ready to rumble. <laughs> Day two not only started out with much much smaller roads and uh, definitely a higher level of difficulty but the roads are small enough that it was easy to get lost even with a GPS track on our navigation systems. Really more challenging than yesterday is the stuff. The reason why Jochen crashed his 25-year-old BMW on the Strada del Sieta is because his throttle got stuck and he was starting to experience similar issues now today and was having issues with the bike and he was starting to get a bit frustrated with it. So guys, we made it up to some refugio place. Um, it's just a one way up and a one way down. Some really nice offer. Definitely more difficult than what we did yesterday, but it's uh, it's a lot of fun. So we're waiting for the other guys. We hear them already. They should be up here any minute. I think I would. <lacht> Und das Gesicht dazu. Das ist glücklich. Oh, Hammer, Hammer. Good stuff. <lacht> The Col de Cotelivé was in itself a really nice track, but for today it was just a warm up for one of the highlights of the trip, the Col de Sommier. <laughs> Cool. 
<lacht> Hammer, ey. Wir müssen äh, Kohle zahlen hier, oder? Hammer. Ja? Okay. okay. small little crash in the corner here of, with Thomas's bike that was just a prelude of all the issues that we're going to face on the coldest of year on this day. <laughs> Oberkrass sieht sie aus. <lacht> Dritter Gang. Somewhere on the way up to the coldest of here, we noticed that we lost Felix and the rider that just passed us, he told us that Felix lost some parts of his motorcycle. His entire windshield of his BMW 1250GS came off, all the screws came loose and we lost his windshield. So we had to take a quick stop here because uh, Thomas's radiator was leaking. And as Jochen was coming up the hill without a license plate and turn signals, you can see that he lost parts on the way up as well. Yeah, what's the rally windshield? The windshield is weg. The schlimmste is that Thomas and Kühler kaputt is. Ich habe das Gefühl, hier löst sich alles auf. <lacht> Nur du. Noch was, Schild an. Ja, die ja. Schraube, aber die kann man nicht mal rausmachen, weil der Schritt ja. im Weg ist. Dann müssen wir den ganzen Tank abnehmen. Weil dann könnt man hier unten sehen. Da ist durch, die Kühler, aber wo? Also, was heißt denn durch? Äh, undicht. Irgendwo ein Rest drin. So, losing parts of some of the other bikes that was just annoying but of course the broken radiator on Thomas's bike that was the first real problem that we encountered but Jochen had a great idea and said you know we're so close to the top let's just ride up to the top enjoy the view and then on the way down deal with the broken bike so I took uh, Thomas on the rear of my bike and he's a tall dude and I was struggling to make it uh, up the hill there
The view from the top of the Col de Somir is absolutely breathtaking and we spend a lot of time on top of the mountain. You can go up to almost 3000 meters on the motorcycle and the rest of the way you have to walk up to the top of the hill where we took this amazing drone shot. Da steht sie. Da. Selfie mit einer Kuh gemacht oder was? Alrighty guys, so the next uh, next bike is down, Chris's 1250 GS, you see it in the back, he uh, had a small puncture in his cylinder head, so a similar problem what Jochen had yesterday, so he's got a coast down his bike, looks like we need the trailer tonight and pick up two bikes, because Thomas's bike won't run either. So there's Chris. Uh, he needs to scoot for this bike. At least Thomas can start a motor every once in a while. Uh, it's because the radio is broken. So you can still use the engine. So trying to enjoy the uh, scenery a little bit. But we have to get downhill. Because uh, we still have to tow the bikes. And probably do some fixing tonight. At least we got the matching colors for the bike. Mine's heute Abend morgen wird die fahren. Yeah. With a crack in the cylinder head of Chris's bike, there was no way we were going to start the engine and risk engine damage. So there were parts where we had to go uphill and we were forced to tow the bikes. And if you look closely, this is definitely not the way you should be towing a bike. When you tow another motorcycle, you should not tie up both bikes solidly together. Uh, if you do, uh, this is the kind of stuff that can happen. So it was quite an eventful day and by the end of day two, we had two broken motorcycles that we brought down the hill. And luckily we had Jochen's camper and the trailer to pick up the motorcycles and bring them back for repair to the camp. Day number two and uh, three people are working on the bikes. <laughs> I'm just gonna head out and get some more parts and uh, we'll see if we can fix this. 
the amazing part about being among all these off-road riders and 4x4 drivers is the camaraderie amongst uh, all the people in the camp. It's the second day in a row that we had to fix our motorcycles and there were lots of people to help out with tools and parts and with the actual repair late into the night to get us ready for the next day. Nach getaner Arbeit. <lacht> Pizza time. As we were working late into the night, we weren't able to fully fix Thomas's radiator, so we had to do that the next day in the morning and fix it with the epoxy and seal the leak. So there's a lot of blue smoke coming out. Anyway, there's still Thomas's bike that needs the new radiator, which is fixed. The plan is that the three of us actually leave now. Lago Nero is the place where we're gonna go, so hope we get back in one piece. We spent the better part of the morning fixing Thomas's bike and to some degree Jochen's bike. He was still having issues with his throttle. And so Chris, Felix and I left to do the afternoon part of the ride that we had planned for day number three. this morning um, but at least we got to go the three of us to at least uh, ride some of the routes maybe all of it today we'll see how late it gets maybe we should take it a bit easier on these tracks so we don't, <laughs> we don't keep breaking bikes all the time um, as long as we can still fix them it's okay but um, there may be a break in there that we cannot fix and then that would suck
through this entire time we encountered very little other traffic so that was definitely one of those tracks that wasn't very popular I guess with other Enduro riders or 4x4 riders and we really enjoyed the solitude uh, being up there, just the three of us. So guys, we're basically standing right on the border of France and Italy. We're just on the French side and now I'm in Italy. Yeah, there we go. It's pretty windy up here. We're just kind of scoping out uh, how far that track is going to take us. And the bikes are still parked in Italy. So they're over there. And we get to enjoy this view from up here. It's awesome. So we'll ride it into France for a little bit and we'll probably have to turn around then and see. So back on the bikes. Let's go to France. 10 meters. <laughs> 10 meters to France. So we're now in France, just past the border. Let's see what we can get there. When we crossed over to France, we weren't sure how far we could take the track down to the French side. Uh, on the map it said you couldn't go very far, so we were able to go a few kilometers down to France and then we had to turn around and make our way back to Italy again. Und wir müssen, und, genau, wir müssen einfach links da rum, da wo ihr vor die Rechtskurve, da müssen wir links, du kannst also hier runter und fahren da dann rechts, das geht auch. Das, kann, genau. das sieht auch voll geil aus hier, so der Blick. Also von hier aus sieht man es vielleicht sogar, wie steil es ist. Darunter jetzt, ne? In the next section you'll see me struggle quite a bit on this downhill slope. It was a lot steeper than it looks and I was having a hard time going down there safely. Das eine Stück war ein bisschen haarig, da ich dann irgendwie zu viel auf der Fußbremse gestanden habe, das Hinterrad. <lacht> Und wenn du dann halt absteigst, dann hast du Hinterradbremse nicht mehr. Oh, 
Das sah schon gut aus. So. It's time to pick up a bike. <lacht> ich meine, genau passen die Bilder. Oh, okay, richtig. Ich weiß, was meinst We spent the first part of the riding day in the mountains. We now arrived in this valley. Oh. Hammer! Kannst du satt durchs Wasser fahren? Was brauchst du? Was ist denn? Zu kalt? Ja. <lacht> <lacht> We had a late start in the day and by the time we arrived in this valley, the sun was already setting so we had to put on some warmer layers and the first thing that Felix thought of when he saw this area that we had to do some water crossings and cross the river which we ended up doing on the way back. Awesome, awesome views. Now this is just a fast road but the, the views are spectacular here. It's just something different to what we saw today, earlier today. Well, it was just uh, mountain passes, basically. Ah, <laughs> yes! Woohoo! This is cool. Oh, potholes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Just as in the first half of the day, we encountered very little traffic uh, in this part of Italy. However, there was another rider though, uh, that seemed to be a local rider, at least a rider with an Italian license plate. So it's the only other motorcycle that we saw the entire time we were in this valley. Most of this dead-end track goes along the river and only the last part of it goes up a small mountain and we're very close to the peak of it and that's uh, the end of the track and from that point on you can enjoy the views and then you have to uh, turn around and go back. Oh, end guy! War doch noch ganz gut am Ende, ne? Kannst du nicht meckern, ey. Ach, ein ganz kleiner noch. Das ist ja richtig geschafft. Bergkätzchen. So, it's getting pretty late now. Um, we just entered the Plane Valley. Um, so it's just basically one way in and one way out. We're at the end of it. Um, it's pretty nice. Most of it's straight road. Uh, we had some sort of more difficult sections that were fun to ride. And we're gonna head back and see what we're gonna do else. Uh, it's getting pretty late and it's gonna get dark. So we'll see if we're doing one more or if we're gonna head back to the camp. Sometimes you just have to wonder who lives in these remote parts of the world. Obviously there was a house there in the farmhouse, so there must have been someone living there. And that little tiny kitten obviously wasn't there by itself. As the sun was setting fast on us, we decided not to do another track. So we went down the hilly part of it, down to the valley, and we enjoyed the faster sections of the valley uh, quite a bit. Uh, did a few water crossings jumped the bikes a few times and uh, just had fun with the remainder of the day.
Looks like my uh, radio is leaking. I don't know if that's... Or is it just water coming down? <laughs> so guys, we're not sure if my bike's next now. Um, there's some warm liquid dropping out from the cooler. That's exactly where Thomas is broke. Um, it's tasteless. It could be from the water crossing right now. But uh, we don't know. We have no idea. So maybe it just stops and we'll, we'll be okay. But maybe my bike is next. I don't know. the previous day was that my radio didn't break it was just the water crossing and just the remaining water coming down the radiator side so it was nothing broken i was really happy about that mont jeffero is definitely one of the more popular tracks Thanks. as you can see just by the traffic it's better known and there's a lot of 4x4 vehicles that we saw a lot of other riders on motorcycles too so we weren't alone on this uh, on this day going up the hill I didn't notice that I lost the entire gang behind me so we usually stop uh, after a while and I stopped here and for a long time there was uh, no one coming up the hill so I didn't really know what was going on Die Tasche hat sich gelöst anscheinend, ist dann hier runter und hat hier den Schutzbrech hinten abgerissen. Ach so, ist da reingerutscht. Thomas was just telling me the reason why it took him so long to get up the hill is because his tail pack came off and it got stuck between the mudguard and the rear tire and it took him quite some time to get it off there again. Luckily nothing seriously broke on the bike so he was able to continue. Hey! It was nice to see some friendly faces from our camp and you can see many other riders decided to use uh, single cylinder bikes, lighter bikes and uh, especially for this section, this is definitely one of the more difficult sections on this particular day. It's doable on a big ADV bike but uh, <laughs> you can see we were struggling uh, a little bit especially when you get surprised by a car in a corner. Another day, another issue as Thomas is coming up the hill. 
he was telling me to have some issues with his gear shifter. He was having trouble getting the bike into first gear. That's a good stick, Jorge. Hey, come here with your bike, Sao. Ne? Oh, ne. for big bikes like this and of course there's only one way up and it's the same way down Who's Thompson? Ist gerade ein Auto vor uns rein, so eine Scheiße. As you can see, the tunnel is very narrow, so when we arrived at the tunnel, we saw a car going in and decided to wait a little bit longer before we entered the tunnel ourselves. And of course, this is not a good place to meet other traffic because uh, it will fit a car, but it will not fit two cars or a car and a motorcycle. <laughs> I just couldn't help myself and had to get off the bike and at least get one photograph of all of us uh, sitting in the town. You see uh, water dripping from the ceiling. It's quite a quite a cool experience and there isn't really a whole lot of traffic so you don't have to worry about meeting a lot of traffic in this tunnel. Where's all that water coming from? Damn! It's raining in here. Oh, this is a stupid ass car. We waited a little bit. Oh, yes, he's just gonna let us pass. Whoa! Ah, <laughs> oh, sunlight. Das sieht ja geil aus. Sollen wir ein Foto machen, ey. Wahnsinn. Boah, Nice.
Yes. to see how quickly the weather turns in the mountains. It was all sunny and great and just shortly after we arrived at the very top um, it started to rain. We could actually see the rain clouds coming in and um, then we decided to make our way down the mountain. Now there's two ways you can go down. You can uh, take a right, this is what we did, or you can take the left turn down the ski slope which is a steeper way to go which we decided not to do especially because it was raining. Here you can see the other guys uh, making a right turn, taking a shortcut down the mountain and I kind of missed the queue, so I had to turn around and then this happened. <laughs> Dropped the bike, was a steep angle and I uh, lost my footing and stalled the engine. Not a big deal, but Jochen came up to help and get the bike up. <sighs> yeah. So, jetzt hast du mich auch mal gemault. Ich wollte auch oben auf den Weg. Dann hast du irgendwie einfach eine Kiste auf die Seite. Alles gut? Na, endlich ist auch mal was kaputt. Ja, alles gut? Der ist, komm, der ist durch. Du bewegst ja auch mal weiter in die Richtung, ne? Ja, wobei links sieht er auch noch so aus. Der ist einfach zur Ecke, dann warst du rutschig und dann ist er mir einfach weggerutscht. I noticed that the gang was kind of falling behind while I was looking in the mirror. Hello? And the reason was Thomas ran out of gas. Ich habe gesagt, die Anzeige spinnt ja auch ein bisschen. Die Sprit alle sein. Okay. Wie weit ist es noch? We're going to fill up Jochen now and then we're going to fill up. Thomas's bike. Now with these big adventure bikes we made sure we didn't fill up the tanks every time we went to the gas station just to kind of keep the weight low. Guys, we're about to head out from base camp one. I was gonna say it smells like rain, and uh, yeah, here it is. 
For the last two days of this trip, we relocated our base camp about four hours south to get us a bit closer to the final tracks that we're going to ride in the next two days. As you can see, most of that transition ride was in the rain. What's up guys? Thomas and I are out to get some bread. It's 8.30 in the morning or something. And uh, we got it late. Didn't have time to get bread. So supposedly next village they have bread. I'm gonna pick up bread and get ready for the day. Now this looks good. <laughs> like all kind of place. Brötchen! <laughs> Okay, off we go guys! Bareta Stura is the uh, first off-road track we're gonna take. And if things go well, we'll meet a couple of friends on the track. So, let's see what today brings. Also on the list is one of the uh, more difficult tracks. On the Denzel rating, which is a 5 out of 5. So that should be fun. To see how we do with these big bikes. Yeah, I don't know what the other tracks were that we were riding in the past few days, but the Denzel 5 out of 5 is probably as much as when you go on a bike like this. To get to many of these off-road tracks, you have to cover a lot of ground on the tarmac. And sometimes you get amazing roads like this one here, which is hardly wider than a single car and offers amazing views. Another thing that is hard to see here is that we are well over 2000 meters in elevation at the very top of the pass we reach an elevation just above 2400 meters. So we're just about five kilometers away from our entry point to the off-road section. But wow, check this out. <laughs> Amazing. Alles gut? So, this is the entry point of the Mareita Stura uh, off-road track. We just entered from the south side and we'll be meeting up our friends pretty soon. Just a few kilometers to go. And yeah.
there are a lot of these cattle gates here which you can pass through but of course you have to remember to close them up again to keep the cattle inside. that we're waiting for is no other than Valle from Valle on Tour who is waving at us from this hilltop. Valle is not coming alone, he's bringing a few friends, Mike from Mike on the Bike and Tim and Melanie, who we all have met last time we were at the Enduro Action Team in Meltowitz. Fährst du ganz hinten? Ja. Olli, fährst du hinter mir? Ja. So we assembled an entire gang, this is it. <laughs> So we're gonna be big group uh, traveling the loop and then back to the my Testura. And it's uh yeah it's like a family gathering on the mountain here guys. <laughs> okay, we're getting ready to go. Val is leading the way. And yeah, it's the biggest group yet. We're going up. We are leaving the main track for the short loop that Valle had planned for us. This is the hard section of the day and there is a steep hill section coming up very soon that makes this a 5 out of 5 track for off-road riding, especially for these big adventure bikes. Usually it's pretty hard to see on video camera how steep or difficult an off-road section is, but uh, you can see Valle going up the steep difficult section and he's getting stuck at the moment. He's riding a BMW R1250 GS Adventure, so that's already a heavy motorcycle. It's also fully loaded with luggage. The good thing is that Valle is a very good rider, so you see him getting out of that situation without any external help. Krasses Ding. Ja. Nee. Lass mal Walle hochfahren erstmal. Fuck. 
Wahnsinn, ey. Wahnsinn. easy das Ding. Ja. Ja. Oh. Das war voll rutschig gewesen, ja. Das ist fast besser, du. Dutchman with luggage. Easy, easy. Oh my. Yeah, once it's stuck, it's really hard. Especially on the loose stuff. Aber eigentlich alle verstreut und richtig heute bis Bayern. Bis Holland. Bis Holland. First difficult part, it just started out being quite difficult. Didn't quite make it. Most of these guys actually made it up there pretty well. Um, I can see the top from here, so let's see how the rest of the track is. Läuft die wieder? 
Die Batterie ging nicht. Thomas picked a really bad spot to have a problem with this battery. He wasn't able to start his bike. Luckily, Valle had a battery pack with a starter kit, so we were able to jump start Thomas's motorcycle and get it out of there. This thing is a correct. Bist du mit Wahnsinn? Der hat aber. Meine Mama haben sie in Klus. Klus? Ja. Ein Vater Militär ist gut. Oh. Our friend hier. Uh, our friend hier has. Uh, had a few to drink. He's a bottle of wine over there. He was just concerned that we didn't block. Um, the track that we just followed, sometimes they're blocked off and you have to close them up again so the cattle doesn't get out. And uh, I think that's his job. So while this does his drone up in the air, and uh, we need to get going because it's running out of battery. And I hope he's gonna stay out of my way. Come on, move it, please, please, please. Okay, we're back in business. So that was Melanie. She was uh, just uh, taking a break here. She wasn't going to do the difficult stuff that we just did. She's also riding a heavy 1250GS. Um, so she, uh, she opted out. This is the route we're taking. We're still very much at the beginning. It took a lot of time to take videos and photos. And we haven't really traveled that far because of the loop. So it's kind of the first time we're going in one piece. I'm just kind of enjoying the road. Before that, we were just enjoying the views and making sure we capture them all in video. So I'm setting up for a photo here.
it was time for us to say goodbye to Valle and friends and continue away. Just the five of us. We still had the Varita Myra track ahead of us and we were not even halfway through the Myra Shura at this point. So we had to pick up the pace a little bit and uh, make up for some time. Just left the Mareita Stura off-road track and heading down to the valley again it seems and then over to the other pass if we have enough time to do that. Na ja, klar, wenn du ein bisschen, ein bisschen drauf Kette gibst, dann schmiert er natürlich. <lacht> Ist das geil oder was? Ja. Hammer.
die anderen beiden. Ja, aber jetzt war das gut oder war, oder? Naja, ist schon schnell. Weil wir müssten ja jetzt langsam oben sein, dass wir auch bald mal wieder runter können. Ja, ja. <lacht> so was, Alter. Das ist krass. <lacht> Kann nicht mehr. Das macht das mit den Patienten auch so. <lacht> Okay guys, we're in the middle of nowhere, uh, literally in the middle of nowhere, I'll show you where we are. And Thomas's battery died one more time, and we probably have to tow him. So we got about halfway, we're in the middle of absolutely nowhere, and it's getting dark, and his battery died. So we need to tow him or something like that. Well guys, you can hear it in the background, we hit rush hour on uh, on off-road track, we're in the middle of it and there's no going forward, plus Thomas's battery just died on us in the middle of the track, so we're about an hour away from uh, from the next town easily, so uh, we need to fix this somehow, maybe tell we can't do it with the cows in the way, so we'll let the cows go home first and then we'll try to fix the bike. So, towing time. It was my turn to tow Thomas's bike. Of course, we didn't really learn much from the previous few days. So we tied the bikes together and that didn't really work out so well, as you will see in a minute. coming up a pretty steep section and you can see that I'm having trouble keeping the line and I'm trying drifting over to the left hand side because the bike that was trying to tow was pulling me back so far and I'm standing on my side and I didn't really want to let the bike drop it would have been the smarter move to just let it drop and I was asking for help and what I didn't see is that Felix had <laughs> trouble putting uh, the side stand down so Chris came up to help me and sort of keep my bike upright so we could continue uh, towing Thomas up the hill. Ah. Oh. Ah. Danke. Du wolltest nicht ablegen. Alter! Ah. Ja, ist echt gefährlich. Ja. Oh. Ich mir da jetzt nichts verdreht habe gerade. Scheiße, verfickte Kacke. Ja. Versuchst so gut wie möglich hintereinander zu bleiben, weil. Fuck me. Alter Schwede. So, weiter geht's. Thomas right now and uh, God on the steep sections the big rocks that is really difficult um, we're as far as 
possible into the track so it's gonna take us a while to even get out of here and coming up here was quite nasty <laughs> so uh, I don't know what to expect um, what's gonna come next always something guys always something almost bailed last time so this looks relatively straight makes me feel better oh, this is insane <laughs> it's actually beautiful up here <laughs> I mean there's some uh, it looks like Jochen is trying to see if someone has jumper cables so maybe we can, we can jump the bike I don't have to tow it all the way. There's a jeep up there. See if there's someone there. But uh, we didn't see a whole lot of people up here. Maybe we're lucky. All we need is a bunch of cables. The rest is easy. I can't believe the fucking battery died. <laughs> Again. Ah. Well, we asked for adventure. Now we have it. <laughs> if this takes any longer, we'll be riding this down in the dark too. Uh, but I know what, the beer's gonna taste really good tonight. Grüß euch! Was ist denn hier los? Ja. Was ist denn hier los? KDM sollte mal lieber. Aber hier ist auch schön, bei euch bleiben wir. Guck mal, Essen ist fertig. Ja, ja. Oh, Starthilfekabel. Yes! Yes! Ich muss erstmal den Drecksknoten hier aufkriegen. Yeah. Warte, 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 ich soll erstmal das Ding hier abmachen. Und dann schiebe ich meine zurück. Erst, erst Minus. Wieso, wenn die einmal läuft? Ja, das Freund lief die auch wieder runter. Mach mal an, komm. Kommt nichts mehr, jetzt ist Feierabend. Scheiße. Das kann sein, dass der einen Schuss hat. Ja, komm. Runter. Lass sie doch mal laufen ein bisschen. Ja, ja, aber vielleicht läuft sie noch eine Weile. Lass doch mal ein paar Minuten. Zeit auf Gas haben, sonst läuft Ja, aber erst mal ein bisschen laufen lassen. Mal gucken, ob es nicht... Ja, gerade. Das muss man mal lange reiten. Und dann muss er einfach die andere Luft laufen. Lange reiten so. At some point we just had to concede to the fact that Thomas's battery was completely dead even though we were lucky to find people that had jumper cables but we tried to jump start the bike twice and it just stayed dead. So Thomas was rolling his bike down the hill and uh, what you don't see in the video here is that he actually got lost one time so we had to pull him up again um, to the middle of the mountain and roll back down the hill so it took a long time for us to get down and we got pretty creative in uh, pulling him on some of the uphill section to get him down to the valley from there. And then there were sections where Thomas tried to push the bike up himself. It's still a 250 kilogram bike, so it's heavy to do that. This is the end of the day. We're all pretty tired and of course uh, Thomas's mood was uh, getting worse with every minute and every every push of the bike. Until he finally hit his mental limit and was just ready to throw the bike in the ditch and call it a day. <laughs> At this point, he would rather have his motorcycle stolen in the middle of the mountain rather than having to push it any further down the hill. 
Das Einzige, was man tatsächlich probieren kann, ist ähm, morgen dafür eine Batterie noch mal zu holen. Ja, guck mal, anderthalb Stunden. Aber wenn die Lichtmaschine nicht lädt, es bringt die Batterie auch nichts. Dann fährt er 10 Kilometer oder dann ist Du kannst den Code am besten. Ja. Ähm, ja. This is a good thing when you ride with buddies, because they will keep pushing you, despite the fact that there were still additional mishaps of uh, trying to tow the bike down the hill. But eventually we made some headway and we got closer and closer to the valley, but we had about another hour and a half from the bottom of the hill all the way back to the campsite. At some point Chris traded places with Thomas, And Chris was riding the KTM that I was towing and Thomas was riding Chris's 1250 GS back to camp. It was a long night, but eventually we made it back safe and sound to the camp. So Thomas's battery is broken. Now we need to buy a new battery this morning. Uh, battery. No, she had 11,3. That's all between 10 and 12. Is good. I want the best. You can't have a couple of my drone batteries. Yeah, I so guys, I'm on Chris's GS. We just went to the BMW dealership to get a battery for the KTM. Uh, we just took two bikes. Uh, we had to order it, now we have to wait, unfortunately, I have to go back to the campground. Anyway, I get to ride the GS, 1250 GS. I haven't ridden it in a while. This is really funny, it's so spongy, it's like, ur, 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 but it's in road mode, so. And it's got no windshield, <laughs> no mirrors. Who needs mirrors, right? The plan was to tow Thomas's bike back to the store where we bought the battery to save some time. And after having towed the bike for almost two hours the day before, on this day we didn't even make it out of the gate without the first incident. The plan is to tow back Thomas's bike to the shop, put new battery in and leave from there with a bit of a delay, but we can still ride most of what we're planning to ride today. So let's get going. Wow! Whoa! <laughs> it's getting up. Wow! Hast du ein Video? War ein bisschen enger Winkel, wa? Ich dachte, du fährst aus drum. Aha, meine Eier. Ah! Shit. Ah, ich wusste nicht, dass du eng fährst, das Ding. Ich muss noch nicht. Ah, was für eine Scheiße, ey. Oh. Ach so. Amateur. Ist der Gang drin. Mein Mutter meint, wir hätten zu viel gesoffen gestern. <lacht> nee, nee, das war das äh, Dings doch. Sag mal. Aha. Ach, das war wahrscheinlich. Äh ja, hoffentlich hebt sie was an. Schrauben. Hast, hast du den Achter noch? Ja, ich habe nichts am Start hier. Erstmal hier einstecken. So, auf ein neues. Also letzter Versuch jetzt. <lacht> ich spreng dich jetzt an, verdammt. Ne? Dann hab ich die Schnauze endlich voll, dann fahr ich mich zum Hause. Äh, voll verbrennt durch das Motor. Also, das könnt ihr aber machen, ich mir egal. Let's try this again. Okay, second try. We're moving, which is good. So, guys. Finally made it to the store. The battery's there. Felix just called in. Pop in the battery and then let's get off-road riding. 
Haben die zugemacht? Siehst du, siehst du, siehst du, siehst du. Sag ich doch. Die Italiener machen gerne zu mittags. We had to work around the long lunch break that you usually have in Italy. So luckily we picked up the battery right before they closed the shop. And finally we were back on the road again. because it splits two countries, the rich splits uh, Italy and France. And it's considered one of the most beautiful roads in the Alps. Um, it's not very technical, supposedly, but it is beautiful. So it's the last day of riding for us, and we decided to do this last. And we just passed the uh, toll booth, because 30 kilometers of this road, you have to pay toll. It's 15 euros, so it's not that cheap. But I'm sure the money is being put to good use to maintain this road, so money well spent, so we can enjoy this in the future too. Sunny, some clouds. 
you know, it could be raining, but it's not. So that's nice. <laughs> Super nice. Echter ligurischer Staub. Also ich glaube nicht, dass du sie hörst, oder? Ich habe irgendwas gehört. Jetzt höre ich nichts mehr. Oder hat der Chris sich lang gemacht, weil er oh. Gas gegeben hat? Look at my glasses. <lacht> Geil aus, ne? Du hast den Chris gelassen. Da sind gerade der Darmausräumer. Was <lacht> <lacht> musst du da an der Bühne von heute Morgen denken? Ich dachte, ich boah, das muss ich Da sind gerade das Geilste, war der Held an so einer Stelle. Da kommt ein Radfahrer, zwei Radfahrer, drei, vier, fünf. Alle halten da an, wo er Ticket? Absolutely. Okay, good. Geradeaus. <laughs>
nur Staub, da kannst du gar nicht schnell fahren. Das war ja bei dir beide. Die Staub nicht so. Nee, gar nicht. Gar nicht. <lacht> something. just left the salt road, well actually salt road itself was pretty short but we had to come down the mountain and there was quite a long off-road track just coming down the mountain it's really really cool um, there was a second part to this route which we didn't take because of the uh, bike trouble we had this morning uh, we didn't get a start until almost one o'clock today so we're skipping the second part which is another 25 kilometer off-road ride we will have to do that next time we in this area. At the moment, we're cruising through France. Uh, we'll be back in Italy here momentarily. And that's also our last night together. And then we're all heading home. And I have uh, three more days of on-road travel. One more day with Thomas. And then two more days by myself. Geile Tour. Geile Tour. Prost, ihr Bufus. So, grüßt euch hin allesamt. Eine lebensreiche Tour. <lacht> Ach, Kenners. Das war was. Das hätte so schön werden können.